So <clears throat> there was a story a couple of years ago about a guy, 39 years old, named Darren Harrison. And Darren, uh, his wife uh, was at the time seven months pregnant with their first child, a baby girl. And Darren was involved, he was like a supervisor kind of role in flooring. He worked in flooring. He was also an avid fisherman. And so when his wife was seven months pregnant, he thought, oh, last hurrah, I'll go for a, for a fishing trip, a special fishing trip in the Bahamas. And he did it, and it was great, and he had a wonderful time. And he and, and uh, some of his buddies were flying back on a Cessna, flying over the ocean, flying over uh, Florida. When, out of the blue, the pilot of the Cessna said, I'm not feeling well, everything is going fuzzy. And then the pilot went unconscious and passed out. Darren was sitting in the, you know, the back part of the plane without hesitation. He'd had his flip-flops on. He kicked him off. He jumped up. He ran to the cockpit. He had never been in a cockpit before. And he and his buddy managed to get the pilot out and onto the ground behind them. He jumped into the pilot's seat. And as he was doing that, he noticed that the Cessna, the plane, was in a nosedive going very fast, heading straight for the ocean. He grabbed the pilot's headset, and it was frayed because he had pulled it out so fast. So he managed to grab another one. He put it on. He couldn't get any uh, radio, anyone on the radio. At no point when he was sitting in the cockpit did he ever think that he was not going to land that plane. He said to himself, I am going to land this plane. I am going to land this plane. I am going to land this plane. Not today. I'm going to see my child. I am going to land this plane. Something in him, something in him, then guided him to gently, because if he had done it quickly, he would have crashed, to gently lift up what I learned is called the yoke. It's like the steering wheel. Uh, Molly, you know this, you fly. Um, gently, very slowly lifted up the yoke, a.k.a. steering wheel, and got the Cessna plane out of the nosedive and back flying straight. Now, a couple of things that are so important to this. That is that it just so happened on that particular day, during that particular hour that this happened, the air traffic controller that was on duty was also a flight instructor. He was able to get in touch with the air traffic controller, and the gentleman on the other end was able to calmly lead him to land a plane. I don't know about you, <laughs> but there's a lot in here to unpack because I'm not sure I would have reacted in that way. I don't know. I don't know. But there's a lot here for us. He shared in an interview, the interview was like one of the morning shows, said, when you got in the cockpit, was your, was your heart racing? Was, was, did your heart feel like it was going to jump out of your body? He said, absolutely not. Not at all. It wasn't until he landed the plane that he felt his heart outside of his body. He shared that as he was coming to the runway at this little airport in Florida, uh, where they had happened to be flying over, that the air traffic controller slash flight instructor said, now, I'm just preparing you. The runway is going to start looking much bigger, and it gets a little bit intimidating. Just take a deep breath, which he did. And he was going way too fast. He didn't know how to, what, slow down a plane? Um, but he was able to do it. He slowed down. He landed. And for those of you pilots in the room, he landed without flaps. So, like, it was even harder to do. Apparently, that's a flight thing. You know, the, fl the flaps on the plane? That's important to land. <laughs> <laughs> There's something in there that helps with the whole situation. He didn't have that either. 
The moment he landed, he began to pray. And he prayed prayers of gratitude. He immediately began thanking the divine for assisting him the whole time. He was very clear about that. And then, immediately after that, he began praying for the pilot who was still unconscious behind him. In the ambulance on the way to the hospital, they said they didn't think the pilot was going to make it. However, a few days later, he walked out of that hospital. Yeah, yeah. This story went viral because there's something about it that is so extraordinary. This man in flooring (laughs) landing a plane this man who is used to being on the ground, that being his comfort zone, managed to land a plane and save everyone on it. My talk today is called, Let Your Soul Be Your Pilot. We get to choose and decide if we are flying the plane of life, if you will, alone, or with God, with love, with grace, with spirit, with the ineffable presence, with the energy of the divine, with our capital S, soul. And make no mistake, our capital S, soul, that is our pilot, if we allow it, that is our inner knower, known by many names across many faith traditions, our inner light, our inner wisdom, the divine love within us as we understand it in our teaching in New Thought is our soul with a capital S. Ernest Holmes wrote, God is an immediate presence that can be found only and directly and immediately in our own soul. God is an immediate presence that can be found only and directly and immediately in our own soul. And I would add to this, it is then reflected in everything. It is reflected in everything. Now, I am very clear that there are two distinct ways to look at the story that I just shared with you, or two distinct ways of looking at the world in which we live. The first is to look at it through the logical, linear lens. For example, when Darren was saying to himself, I am going to land this plane, hmm, he was simply clarifying for himself what he planned to do. Second thing, maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe he had seen a movie, some action movie, where the actor just pulled up very slowly on the yoke and got the plane out of a nosedive and somewhere in his brain he remembered that. Okay. And maybe, maybe the logical linear thinker and way of looking at the world would say that the fact that that day at the very same time, it just so happened that the air traffic controller was also a flight instructor, just a mere coinky dink Just a coincidence, that's all. Yay for Darren and everyone on the plane. That is one way of seeing that story. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And there is a second way to understand this extraordinary story through the spiritual and mystical lens. And that is, when Darren was saying to himself, I am going to land this plane, he was actually speaking an affirmation, which used to be called a mantra, is still called a mantra, of truth that created the spaciousness within himself to believe that it was, in fact, true. And his affirmation, I am going to land this plane, was communicating to his higher self, his soul with a capital S, that he was available for guidance. That he was open and available for guidance. And so secondly, the voice or the wisdom within him that knew to gently lift up the yoke so the plane would not crash into the ocean was actually the still small voice of the divine within his soul, his spirit within him. And because he had created that spaciousness within himself, because he had steadied himself in spirit, 
In faith, in God, in the divine, in love, he made himself available to hear the crucial instruction how to take the plane out of the nosedive. And the fact that the air traffic controller that day, that hour, happened to also be a flight instructor was pure grace. It was angels at work. It was divine timing, also known as a miracle. Now, having spent time in my own life in both, looking through both of those lenses, first half of my life was very linear and logical. This part of my life is very spiritual and mystical. I highly recommend the second one. I highly recommend the spiritual take on life. It makes it so much easier. We're always a choice, thanks to free will, to decide which lens we're going to see our world through. And if you choose to see this world through the spiritual or mystical lens, you will find, you will discover, you will come to deeply understand that whatever situation you find yourself in, Whatever plane you find yourself in, you are never, ever, 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 ever alone. You, in fact, are always being guided. We humans forget that all the time. But the spiritual truth, the mystical truth, is that we are never alone. There is always spirit, love, standing at the ready within us and around us on our behalf. And it's such a liberating feeling I will share with you to get to this place where you know in your bones that you were never meant to do any of this life alone. That is not the natural state of human beings. We have a constant divine companion or comforter guiding us at all times. All times. Through all of it. It's interesting to me that Jesus of Nazareth refers to the divine Holy Spirit as the comforter on four different occasions in a space of three consecutive chapters in the book of John. And the writers of that ancient, beautiful text wanted us to clearly to hear and to focus on this idea of God or spirit as the great comforter for us. The word comforter comes from the Greek parakletos, which means one who walks beside or with you. We are never alone. The beloved teacher Wayne Dyer said, If you knew who walked beside you at all times on the path that you have chosen, you could never experience fear or doubt again. If you knew who walked beside you at all times on the path that you have chosen, you could never experience fear or doubt again. So I thought we would unpack this a little bit today, if you're willing. Are you willing? Okay. Beautiful, great. So for those of you here, those of you at home, I invite you to take a deep, easy, nourishing breath in. Close your eyes if that's comfortable, or you can certainly gaze at a fixed spot directly ahead of you if that's more comfortable for you. You may want to place your hand on your heart. That's something I do a lot. It helps to ground me in love, if that works for you. And I invite you to just simply consider what area in your own personal life, this could be a relationship, a health or grief journey, finances, career, creative project. Where you feel like you may be flying that particular plane alone or that you have to fly it alone. And consider if you might be willing to even more, perhaps, for some of you, allow your divine soul, your inner wisdom, spirit, to just be the pilot for a while. 
What area of your life could you use some support or may need some rebalancing? Where can you turn this over to your highest self, to your soul? And so I invite you into the spiritual tool that I love. Just simply and silently ask your inner wisdom, your highest self, your soul, what am I to know about this? What am I to know about this? And just for a few moments, I invite you to listen. We're simply asking our soul for guidance because spirit in you knows. What am I to know about this thing, this area, this? Allow this response to come from love, the guidance from spirit. Your still, small voice is always compassionate and kind. That is how you know it is divine guidance. What am I to know here, spirit? And now, taking in a deep breath, I invite you to anchor this loving response in your memory for the week ahead, knowing that this divine support and guidance is just for you. And when you're ready, I invite you to gently open your eyes and return to this space. I have been practicing and teaching the spiritual tool, Spirit, What Am I to Know, for over a decade now, and I can tell you from my own personal experience, it works. It's one of my favorite tools of all time. I use it all the time and I invite you into this spiritual practice. It's really simple. Spirit, what am I to know here? You can do this while you're watching the news. You can do this while you're at the dinner table with, I don't know, tricky family members. Pass the potatoes. Spirit, what am I to know? <laughs> I invite you into this spiritual practice as something you do daily as your normal, as your go-to. This is how we allow our soul to be the pilot. We think we have all the answers, we do not. Spirit within us, however, does. And it will never, ever steer you wrong. It will never steer you wrong. And in making this a regular daily practice, you will begin to feel so very comforted. So recognizing that truly our soul is our life's pilot, if we allow it to be, we can lean into this wisdom for loving support, especially as we navigate the next few months leading up to the election. The transcendentalist Ralph Waldo Emerson, who is considered to be the grandfather of New Thought, of our teaching, wrote that there is a spiritual unity that transcends individual existence. He taught that there is a divine presence within each person that connects all sentient beings to one another and to the universe as a whole. He called it the oversoul. I know there are some of you here in the room and online who are currently in our Roots of New Thought 
class and you've had the opportunity in this past week to read Emerson's essay called The Oversoul. I invite you all into it if you're curious about it. It was written in 1842. There's enormous wisdom there. And Emerson wasn't writing about anything new, though. This concept called by so many names, the oversoul, oneness, it's an ancient spiritual teaching found across faith traditions that teaches that we have our own soul divinely connected and we have a collective soul that connects us to each other as one. So the divine presence within each other also connects us to each other. Our own spirit or soul is shared with the collective in the name and understanding of oneness. And this is meant by the idea, if you've heard this idea, of the soul of a people or the soul of the world or the soul of a country, the soul of a place. It means the good or the divinity of a group of people and their place in the world. I've been thinking a lot about this this week. The soul or the good of our country here in the United States. It's easy to forget the good right now. But make no mistake, the good is here and the good is wanting more spaciousness to emerge. And how will that happen? Through each one of us as a reflection of the divine. In a recent poll by the American Psychiatric Association, nearly three-fourths or 73% of the respondents said they are feeling anxious about the election. Anybody? Just me? Okay. All right. Well, here in our spiritual community, we have the opportunity to help alleviate some of that anxiety. To look through this time, through that second spiritual, mystical lens. This will sustain us during this time, beloveds. I'm going to be talking more in detail next week about this, but I wanted to let you know something that I am very, very excited about for all of us. My dear colleague, many of you, of course, know him, and I know that there are many new folks here who don't know him, uh, but the previous senior minister who was here for many, many, many years, our beloved David Alexander, Reverend David Alexander, contacted me and he let me know that he had this download, this vision that came to him, and it's wonderful, and it's so beautiful. And so within our New Thought movement, just over the last week, he reached out to the teachers and thought leaders and um, ministers in our centers all over, all over the place, and we have jumped in, and here is what it is. Beginning next Sunday, July 28th, it will be 100 days before the election. Next Sunday starts our 100 days. Everybody deep breath. We have got this. We have got this. We are going to be participating in a beautiful, beautiful opportunity here in our community and all over the country and world to tune out the fear and tune into the vision. The vision, of course, being a world that works for everyone. Full stop. That's the vision. Doesn't that encompass everything? A world that truly works for every person and all of creation. So how do we do this? Beginning next Sunday, the 28th, you are invited, just an invitation, to take two to three minutes maximum every day for 100 days and listen to an inspirational message from one of our movement's teachers or thought leaders that will serve to anchor you in the truth and empower you. And together, as we do this, we're going to raise the vibrational frequency affirming human dignity for all people and peace in our lifetime. So you are being given a free gift. It's a free gift. He's so sweet. David, 
He created this. He put my face on there. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? And he did that for, for, for many of us. This is very, very dear. Um, all you need to do, you can even do it right now. You can take out your phones, those of you at home. All you need to do is text JOIN to the number 470-784-0250. You could even take a picture of it. This is going to go on all of our socials, so you're going to see it. It was in the email, all the, all the places. And we'll talk more about this next week. All you have to do is put the, this phone number in, 470-784-0250. Text the word JOIN. And all that will do is beginning next Sunday, you will start receiving one inspirational message right on your phone. Three minutes max. Believe me, they let us ministers know only three minutes. Two to three minutes at the most. Um, and this will support us. This will buoy us up. This will remind us of that second vision, the spiritual, mystical vision that all of us hold for our country. Michael Beckwith is kicking it off next Sunday, and on Monday I follow him with my inspirational message, and so on, for 100 days. You're going to get to hear from all sorts of teachers across our movement. It's going to be, I can't wait. Are you kidding? Every morning to have an, an inspirational message during this time? Isn't this brilliant? Thank you, David Alexander. I love you, brother. And one of the things that I'm also really excited about is we are going to be using this book, this incredible book. If you haven't read it, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. This book, it's called What It Takes to Heal, How Transforming Ourselves Can Change the World by Prentice Hemphill. This is filled with somatic practices that we are going to be incorporating during this 100 days. So I invite you into this, and we'll have copies of this available next week in our bookstore. Thank you, Carolyn, for that. Um, so it's going to be a multi-pronged approach to supporting each other and our vision for our country. I'm so, so incredibly grateful for this opportunity for all of us. So... I just look forward to doing this practice with you all. It's going to be so much fun and so great. Isn't it great? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing. So for this week, beloveds, for this week, I invite you to let your soul be your pilot. Stop trying to do it all yourself. You were never meant to. Let go, let God, let love and I invite you to allow love to lead the way this week in whatever way you can.